So Magical Mystery Tour comes out. Okay, they took a little one on the chin for that one. But then Paul says, we're not going to let that get to us. Uh, they, they took that spirituality uh, that they had taken in that train trip, and they decided we're going to go to England. I mean, I'm sorry, we're going to go to India and do the full trip over there. We're going to spend as much time as we need to. So the four of them in March of 68, they record Lady Madonna to get them on the charts, and then they hit the road. They hit the road, and Ringo couldn't stand Indian food, so he packed cans of beans <laughs> as to not upset his stomach. Uh, Donovan was along on that trip, as was Mike Love of the Beach Boys. Uh, and it was a lot of meditation. They were each given a mantra to help them meditate. And, you know, and they, they'd been around the world and had people screaming at them every day. You know, now they're off in the Ganges and just, you know, trying to gain something different and bigger than, you know, the world as they knew it. And while they're up there, Donovan's teaching John how to do this certain picking. It's called Travis picking. And John wrote several songs off of that. Half of what I say is meaningless But I say it just to reach you Surely I Also, dear Prudence Won't you come out to play? And others. And you know, it's, it's lucky that Mike Love was along with him because I've interviewed him recently and he said to me, you know, I helped write back in the USSR. I go, well, what do you mean about that? He goes, well, Paul was going to write this song about Russia. And I said to him, well, why don't you take all the cities in Russia and plug them in like we did on California Girls? Right. And, and, and Paul tries to make it sound like a Beach Boys song. Dog, dog, dog. Well, the Ukraine girls really knock me out. They leave the West behind. Oh, God. And Moscow girls make me scream and shout That George is always on my mind, my mind, my mind, my mind, my mind And because they were spiritual and really getting into their own headspace and everything, there was a situation where I guess everybody's guard was down and the Maharishi was making passes. And well, there was a... Sexy Sadie. Yeah, well, Sexy Sadie, you know, uh, was really written about Maharishi. Maharishi. What have you done? Well, became sexy Sadie. What have you done? Because John didn't want you know to get hit by lightning one day, you know. Uh, but but the Maharishi was after Prudence. Now Prudence was the sister of Mia Farrow. And when word got out, that's all John needed. He said, "That's it. I'm done. You're not God. I'm out of here." Right. Now Ringo had packed up and left early. Ringo had only stayed a week. You know, Ringo was on the, then less than we're on the cruise, you know? He, he didn't even get to go to Nassau again. But no, he left after a week. Paul left after two. He said, that's enough time. I figured it out. And, and George and John stayed for a, a, about a month or more and came home. But the good news about it is they came home with 40 songs. And that yeah. was the White Album. Became the White Album. And so they recorded in, this, in May until a couple of months uh, all the songs on the White Album. George Martin wanted it to be a single album because let's take Obla D, let's take Back in the Year, let's take the best 14. Yeah, that's the way that George as a producer would think. You know, let's not just have all this you know, haberdash in there. But you've got great songs like Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Take these broken wings and learn to fly all your life. You're only waiting for this moment to arrive. And because the White Album was so different, it's almost like four solo albums, which is what the Beatles were becoming at that time. They became each other's separately. backing bands, more yeah. or less, and that's kind of the way it felt. Ringo even left during that period. He felt that, he said, my drumming's not good enough, you don't need me anymore, and he left. And they really did miss Ringo, even though Paul plays drums on Back in the USSR. And Dear Prudence, too, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, uh, and that got to Ringo. I mean, you, you got to imagine, you know, oh, Paul's going to play my part now. It's the Pete Best thing again, all you know, over again. But, yeah. Could be. But they talked Ringo into coming back. They had flowers all over the studio, you know, draped around his drums and said, we love you, Ringo, you're the best in the world. Please stay with us. And he did. And he did. And then, uh, well, when the White Album finally came out, there was, a, you know, the kind of guys kind of went their own way and, again, and there was a lot of arguing and you know a little they needed some time away I mean you think about it they were together since they were 15 I mean and, and here they were in their late 20s at this point and uh, you know they never had a chance to you know have an ordinary life you know <laughs> at that point right so they wanted those things but again you know Paul's rallying the troops 
listen, I think what we need is to get back to that 10 hour, 12 hour session for Please Please Me. Let's try to make an album live in the studio and then let's go take it on tour. Right, and John said, I'll have nothing of that. <laughs> and, now, and John and Yoko, now Yoko, no one was let into the inner circle of the Beatles, particularly in the studio. I mean, maybe you had Mal Evans, mm -hmm. uh, you know, George Martin, uh, Jeff Emmerich, the, you know, the engineer. Uh, but to have a woman inside the Beatles circle, I mean, it was a sanctuary. Right. But John insisted, you know, and John started the band, so John got his way. I mean, he, you know, they would go to the bathroom together. They would do everything together. In fact, they got pregnant and Yoko miscarried, and John moved a bed into the Abbey Road Studios. And they did not get on too well with that. But that's the way it was going to be. Mm -hmm. So when Paul tried to pull everybody back together, he said, let's just get back to our roots. Let's do an album. We'll call it Get Back. We'll record all the songs. But unfortunately, like Strawberry Fields, Get Back was released before the project was ready. So the album became Let It Be. But they sat there for the whole month of January in 69 and recorded hundreds of hours of tape. Yeah, and it eventually was handed over to Phil Spector, who put choirs and reverb all over it. And, you know, so much so that the Beatles didn't even care for it anymore. Recently, they came out with Let It Be Naked, which is stripped of all the Phil Spectorism, and it's more like what the band would have sounded like without the embellished, you know, icing on the cake. And people may not know that when Phil was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Paul got up and walked out uh. of the ceremony because he, he still carries that grudge. But I think Phil has gotten some level of his due now. You know, we, as we know, uh, he was a crazy individual in the studio. Yes.